Okay, hello, Dalt folk and community out there watching. Uh, today, we have Nicola Galloway. Did I say that correctly, Nicola? You did, yes, yes. Okay, uh, very good. Uh, we have Nicola Galloway coming from, as you see on her screen, the University of Glasgow. Uh, my name is Wayne Malcolm. I'm the director of program for JALT, and we're going to uh, conduct a little interview here and talk with one of our main main Zoom room screen stage plenary speakers, uh, Nicola. So welcome, Nicola. Thank you for uh, taking your time. I know, what time is it in? It's 9 a.m. So this isn't the earliest start. I yes. think my workshop starts at 6 a.m. Yes, that's <laughs> right. That's right. 6 a.m. on a Monday at that. What no, a way to kick off a no. Monday. Thank you. <laughs> there you go. So thank you so much, actually, for dealing with the time differences and all the scheduling things we know. Um, in this world of Zoom, sometimes uh, I think when we do schedule things, we take it maybe a little bit for granted now that we can just come from anywhere. So we're like, okay, let's just send her a schedule and be okay. And we realize uh, that's 3 a.m. in the morning where she is. You might want to <laughs> change your time. <laughs> that doesn't really work out for some people. Her I'll have plenary. a lot of coffee at my workshop, I think. Yeah, exactly. Her plenary is at 9 a.m. Japan time. That's like one o'clock in the morning her time. That's not good. Um, so, but thank you so much for uh, spending spending some time with us today. Um, and just to start, uh, why don't you give a little introduction about yourself? Tell us, uh, you know, what you do, uh, what you research. Uh, go right ahead. So I am Nicola. Um, thank you for um, inviting me along today and also to be the plenary speaker at JALT. I remember, I can't remember how many years ago now, giving quite a few presentations. I used to attend JALT yearly when I lived in Japan. I now work at the University of Glasgow. I was at the University oh. of Edinburgh until a year ago. I changed jobs during COVID, so it's been quite interesting. I've still only met one of my colleagues in person, so the last oh, wow. year been online. Wow. Yeah. Um, I'm the programme director for the Masters and the MED in TESOL. I've recently taken on the role as head of publications. And from January, I'll be introducing a new teaching English as an international language, a TEAL course um, on our option course. So I'm busy writing that course at the moment. Oh, wow. So really, thanks a lot. Especially you just said, wow, you listed, rattled off all those things. Man, your schedule must be jam-packed. It's busy just now because we had a delayed start date. So usually in the UK, the masters start in September. We delayed uh -huh. ours to January. So at the moment, we've got an overlapping cohort. We've got the January starts and the new September starts. So okay. a lot of students at the moment. Okay, I see. All right. Wow, thanks a lot. Um, so you actually, you have two talks because as a plenary speaker, you have the main plenary talk and then you have a workshop. And yours in particular, actually, your plenary kind of leads into the workshop. Am I right about that? Yes? That's correct. Yes. Okay. Okay, great. So, yeah, I'm just going to ask you a couple of questions uh, to get a couple. We're not going to give any full disclosure about anything that's going on. We're just going to ask a little couple of teaser questions about uh, the plenary so people can, can kind of get a feel of what's, of what's coming. Okay. Okay. Um, and actually, starting off, I wanted to ask you something about in your plenary talk, uh, you, you mentioned that uh, communicative language teaching is probably the most significant development in ELT over the past 50 years. Uh, I found that was a really interesting framing. Um, how did, like, uh, uh, where did that come from in your mindset and uh, in terms of uh, communicative language teaching being that significant? I think in the field of TESOL, we've seen this constant quest for the best methods over the years. There's been a real focus on methodology, um, mm. almost an obsession with finding that the best methods and then, you know, another one becomes popular that replaces the previous one that becomes fashionable. So we've seen, you know, from grammar translation to audio lingual. And then we had um, the, the focus on needs analysis, the development of ESP in the 70s, and then the notion of communicative competence. So we moved away from the focus on grammar to, towards communicative competence and then we saw a number of associated methodologies within this paradigm um, and recently as well with the, the global phenomenon of EMI and higher education mm. it's 
very closely linked with developments in communicative language teaching. This idea that English is best learned through English, monolingual ideologies, the immersion methods. So um, I, I think that, yeah, the, the spread of EMI is very much associated with developments in communicative language teaching. But as I argue in my plenary, I think we need, um, you know, even though we, we had this shift towards communication and communicative competence, mm -hmm. It wasn't Del Heinze's um, intention, but we still have a focus on native norms. And I think that what we have now is this mismatch between how English is being used as a global lingua franca outside of the classroom and how it's been presented in traditional curricula within the classroom. Mm -hmm. Native speakerism continues to prevail. So I, I started framing this arguing that, you know, CLT was, um, you know, the most significant development in ELT. Um, regarded as a clear paradigmatic break with the past, but we, we need a new break now away from a break away from native speaking norms. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, I see. No, that's it. I, I think that will uh, definitely um, gain a lot of uh, understanding in Japan um, with the way the with the way the language, in particular, the language teaching community, uh, English language teaching community is in Japan, I think. So, wow, that sounds really, that's great. Yeah, um, I became interested in the topic I was addressing. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's <laughs> so, right. That's right. Yeah. I was in Gumaken in a very rural village, Namokumura. And it was there I started to question, you know, what is my role here? I was, my, um, I was given a CD of American English to try and make my Scottish accent sound more American. Um, my spelling what? was corrected on the board because it was British spelling. And I just, I became fascinated in uh, varieties of English and um, attitudes. And then also, I, you know, as, as I continued teaching there, I soon felt very inferior to my non-native English speaking counterparts who had a much superior knowledge of the English language and were qualified mm. teachers. And I was a yeah. swimming teacher, an English teacher. So um, that's really where my interest in this topic stemmed from. And then I did my PhD on Japanese students' attitudes towards English. And I've continued my research in this area. So, mm -hmm. so it's nice to come back to Japan to present the work. Yeah, that's great. That's great. Um, so that's right. So you were actually living in Japan like a... Uh, I wouldn't say long time ago, but you were, but, but you, you were, you were, you were living in Japan. So that's pretty, yeah. So you definitely have a lot of connection to here, which is great. Um, yeah, I was there for just over 10 years. 10 years. Oh, okay. Oh, great, great, great. All right. So you're Japanese. You're good to go. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, okay. So looking at your uh, plenary then, could you give us a little, um, teaser about something you mentioned kind of at the end of uh, one of your the uh, the abstract about what the 21st century ELT in the 21st century should look like um, that's going to be in your that's going to be in your talk I'm sure but could you give us a little teaser about what you think the ELT in the 21st century should look like yeah, I'll draw and work in different paradigms. I mean, I use global Englishes as an umbrella term. So it's an inclusive paradigm that aims to bring together work in the field of world Englishes, English as a lingua franca, EIL, and also resonates with uh, work on translanguaging and also within the field of SLA, so uh, the multilingual turn. Scholars in all of these fields have called for change to ensure that the 21st mm. century ELT classroom is reflective of how English is used as a global language. And scholars in all of these paradigms have also put forward models for change and proposals. So my work in this field really started with trying to address the theory practice divide. So uh, there was almost a sense of frustration, I think, at the classroom level that scholars we're arguing at the theoretical level on the need for change, but nobody was telling teachers what to do. Mm, mm. So this really started in my PhD where it was gathering kind of, well, trying to make sense of what it was that people were calling for. So I came up with GELT proposals, but also recognizing that obviously introducing an innovation is, is challenging and it's context specific. So exploring the, the possible barriers to introducing this perspective in the classroom. So I'll introduce um, what we've called the, the GELT framework, Global English Language Teaching Framework, 
but I'll also introduce um, ideas from from the different like world English's informed pedagogy or EIL um, mm -hmm. oriented teaching as well, and really explore these proposals for change and 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 what this curricula would look like. But again, acknowledging that innovation is challenging. Um, mm. I'll draw on a recent systematic review with Heath Rose and Jim McKinley. We published this in language oh, teaching clear. Yeah, it's it's we've um, reviewed the research here in Global English is Innovation. So it's, it's really good that recent years have seen a flurry of study exploring how to incorporate this into the classroom. So we've reviewed yeah. a lot of studies there. Yeah, no, I think that's one of the most important things, like you were saying before about being in Guma and connecting with those uh, teachers in the classroom who who do have a lot of expertise. You know, they've probably been teaching for so long and they their expertise is in classroom teaching practices and getting this stuff across and their, you know, their knowledge of, um, you know, their knowledge of the English language. Some, yeah, definitely can exceed you know, definitely exceeds probably, you know, uh, you know, definitely ours as a native speaker, right? Definitely exceeds that. So, but then getting the theoretical side and the practice side together is, yeah, it's always a, it's always a big, big challenge, um, especially when you're talking to classroom teachers and explaining like, well, this is the theoretical of this. And they're like, well, how does that work in my classroom? Give me something that I can you know, do with my students. They need concrete suggestions. They yeah. need lesson plans. They need materials. They need tests as well. So mm. we'll, we'll, I'll, I'll look at all of this. And this um, building up a community of researchers and practitioners and increasing collaboration was, was part of the main reasons for setting up the online network as well. And I'll, I'll talk about that in the workshop. Actually, that, oh, was my, right. that was my that was my next little 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 bit of a teaser, a little bit of a teaser. Because whenever we get into uh, community of practice, online networks, uh, I always yeah ask. Uh, so yeah, you said uh, innovative new online network, and that will be the highlight of your workshop on the Monday, right? So that'll be the thing you'll be looking at on Monday. Would you like to give us a little, just a little little teaser about that as well, a little appetizer. Yeah the network up a few years ago. Unfortunately, it hasn't been live for 10 months because transferring universities, moving domains, oh. um, we've had a few issues. I had, unfortunately, bad experience with a website company. So we've got a new company now and it's all up and running and I've got mm. um, funding. I've got an intern in place to work uh, with us on the network as well. So this is teaching English and teaching in English in global context. So we've got a global English strand and an EMI strand. Um, it's an online community of practice of practitioners, researchers, and we've also been doing some work with policymakers. So to increase the impact uh -huh. of our research, to encourage you know policy and pedagogical uptake, we've got over seventy coordinators around the world. Wow. Um, yeah, we've got teams in various countries and professional development pages, research pages. So the professional development coordinator, for example, does little blog interviews with Global English's teacher trainers. We've got uh, research reviews. So trying to make our research more accessible to practitioners, you know, teachers don't have time to read it. Mm. Always, you know, like our one of our recent books or our, an academic article, they've got so many classes. So if we can have little mini abstracts or blog interviews on the main findings of our work, then we're, we're hoping that this will um, enhance our reach into the classroom. We've got research pages, so we want to encourage our members to upload their data collection instruments, so to encourage um, replication studies. We've got a YouTube channel and Facebook pages, so we've got a big early career strand. So I work with a lot of uh, PhD students at various universities around the world and try and encourage them to, to connect and uh, work together. So it's, it's been a nice way for for me to stay in touch with my students as well I've been given funding at Glasgow to develop the alumni strands of this so oh wow that's great yeah and I think it will be really really good to then I don't want to say follow teachers into their careers but this that we need more longitudinal work mm, in this yeah field. yeah yeah how once students graduate from the masters how they're returning to their home context or to work somewhere else are they incorporating any of these perspectives into the classroom? How, why not? Or how do they adapt things? And 
so yeah, there's there's a lot of different purposes to the network, but also we meet people at conference. Well, not now, but we meet people at conferences, <laughs> and we have these conversations, and then we all go home. And I thought the network's a really nice place for us to to stay in touch. And we've got mailing lists and newsletters, mm. so it's we're doing it all on a voluntary basis. So it's been a lot of work, but um, I'll go through this in the workshop, and we'll have some interactive activities. So yeah, yeah, I hope people will come along. Yeah, that's great. I mean that you hit on so many different, uh, so many key points. Uh, one, that policy point. I often think that's one of those things that, uh, and it may be very specific to Japan as well, is that because the Ministry of Education kind of lays out all the guidelines for the schools in the different subject areas, policy is really important to how teachers then teach. So once they lay out this policy about what, you know, in our context, language teaching is going to be the, how it's going to follow the kind of curriculum and stuff like that. So that kind of policy directly affects mm. what teachers do in the classroom. So a look at that is so important. Getting different perspectives about you know um, it's just it's just so so important because one just leads in one leads yeah, into the next. Yeah, we the research sections with an. I'll, I'll focus on this in the workshop. Yeah, how how to increase? I mean, we keep hearing, particularly in the UK, this word research impact and what mm. is impact? What does it mean? And what are pathways to impact? So we'll we'll look at this in the workshop and yeah, really how to increase the impact of our work in global Englishes and to influence, like you say, mm. policy and pedagogy. Wow, that's great. Wow, sounds like a huge, huge undertaking if you have all those people from all across <laughs> yeah. the world. You must have like a bank of clocks on the back of your wall in your office or something that has like the time in each in each time zone. This week's been funny. I've had lots of things at different times. So I'm actually taking the day off and I'm taking my road bike up the north in Scotland. So Oh, ah, there you go. There you go. Get a, a little bit of a reset, a little time reset back. So you can get the uh, regular time, but then it's going to get thrown off with Jolt again. So it's okay. <laughs> I know, I know. Six in the morning. That's okay. I understand. I mean, it must be difficult to plan with people in lots of different time zones. Yeah, I'll ask our uh, program chair who does all the planning. I just tell him, make sure this works out. And then he's like, uh, okay, I'll try that, make sure it works out. But yeah, we also, I totally understand your volunteer, like managing all that because Jolt is basically volunteers. Um, so it's a it's a it's a group of volunteers that puts on the conference and manages the organization and stuff. We have a we have a office staff who then kind of keeps all that glue together in a central place. But a lot of the other um, uh, decisions and even some of the day to day logistics things are all run by volunteers. So it's an amazing effort that people once people get passionate about something and they get into it, it's amazing to uh, work with them on that level. So I definitely, um, yeah, cheer you on for all that uh, that you're doing there, especially especially for obviously the community that we're working in. So that sounds great. Um, we have here, your main plenary is on the Friday and you actually kick off the day by closing out the day because that day we have a day of technology and teaching workshops as well as professional development workshops and your plenary kind of capstones that day um, uh, moving in moving into then the bigger weekend and then also your 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 workshop is on the other side on the Monday so you kind of bookend both of the you kind of bookend the uh, the conference in a way no um, pressure yeah so no pressure no pressure at all you kind of start and end like you start and end the conference in a way so uh yeah 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 so no pressure no pressure i think the title of the conference fits well with the theme as well reflections mm. and new perspectives i think that you know this is a new perspective on english language teaching well one that's been called for for a long time so we'll yeah. reflect on those calls but new perspectives as well yeah that sounds great so um won't take up any uh, too much more of your time. Uh, so let's, with that, bring it to a close. And why don't you uh, give us a little summary or uh, maybe you could tell us where we could find your research, um, some other things that you're doing. So you can find the link to the online network, I think in my profile, um, a staff profile at Glasgow. Um, it's Global English's EMI 
network.com i think i should know that i will know that for the, the, the workshop we have a we have a we have a crackpot of of a, a researcher our pr guy who will find that probably and okay. put it underneath your name so go right ahead so there's a lot of updates there and um yeah research gate as well i need to update that this week um but yeah i would just check out the, the staff page is usually um everything's up to date there okay great well thank you so much again thank you for spending the time with us uh in i know it's morning where you are evening right now where i am and uh we are definitely looking forward to hearing and seeing your plenary and your workshop sounds like really 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 interesting stuff and i think uh it will really fit in the japanese context but obviously the global context as well so thank you so much and uh we'll see you at the conference thank you for inviting me bye all right <laughs> bye bye